The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Realist Puppet in the game. Six tips for louder mixdowns. But who doesn't want louder mixdowns? I find myself often uh, finding the same mistakes when I go back and revisit my old mix downs. So I've compiled a list of my top six most simple um, approaches to help yield the best finished product when you're mixing down your songs. With number one, I say use less sub. You do not need as much sub in your mix down as you think. When you work on the song, you get so used to hearing it at full blast that when you turn it down to the place where it actually needs to be, it doesn't seem like there is enough sub. But when you turn your sub down, maybe one or two, you create a noticeable amount of headroom down at the master channel for you to then boost, which uh, will increase the volume of your highs and mids. I try and kind of cater my approach to the listeners, uh, especially the first time listeners by making everything as clear and loud as possible. So just by simply turning down your sub, you'll find that you have just created all this clarity and volume in your mids and highs. Number two, you do not need as much reverb as you think you do to get your track to sound big. People just assume that because reverb creates space, it makes your track sound big. And if your track sounds big, then it sounds louder. But I find that to almost be the opposite of the case, where if I'm mixing a lead vocal or a lead synth, by using less reverb, I actually am drawing it to the forefront versus putting more reverb on it and kind of pushing it into the... Uh, stereo space which kind of moves it to the background uh, I find myself going for shorter reverbs and maybe putting a compression um, solution after it to kind of increase the volume of it without having those tails that overlap and make the rest of your sounds kind of covered in mud moving on to number three instead of putting a compressor directly on your master Try putting a compressor on a return track. I went over this in my most recent video about mastering. I'll link to that in the description. But the benefits of doing compression in parallel versus doing it right on the master uh, is that you do not lose your transients. Compression often makes things sound louder because it boosts the volumes of the tails of the sounds of the quieter parts but at the expense of losing the punchiness and the attack of what I think may be even more important, which is your kick and snare. By doing your compression in parallel, you're able to balance between the over-compressed and the completely uncompressed sound to kind of find a happy medium, which I find gives you the best of both worlds where you don't have to sacrifice your punch for those nice compressed tails that make a mix down sound loud and glued together. Do you produce music and love making hot club bangers? Do you find yourself constantly searching for those crispy snares and percussions? Do you want your beats to make people turn up? Maybe it's time you stepped up your sample pack library. Here at Whole Loops, we've got the product for you. Introducing Raw Hits, our debut sample pack of organically grown drum one shots, loops, FX, vocal samples, and all the production essentials you'll need to add some organic flavor to your secret sauce. Raw Hits is available now only at wholeloops.com. Moving on to number four, carefully go through your instrument groups or your vocal groups, or even your master channel with an EQ to find frequencies to dip out. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial about using the EQ to find these frequencies and uh, how to detect the ones that are good and the ones that you don't want in there. Um, I touched on this a little bit in my lead vocal processing video, which I'll also link in the description, but that same technique is 
very useful on your master channel and on the groups that are getting sent to your master channel because you'll find that there's a lot of mud. So by getting rid of all the low frequencies or overtones that don't need to be in there, you are again making space for what's important. Number five is a very simple dynamic solution. Oftentimes the buildups of your song get so loud because so many uh, snare drums and uplifters and layers get piled on and on and on. And it's also a point where the sub is usually at its least. And often what happens is when all the sub comes back in with the drop, you lose the uh, apparent volume of the entire song because the part at the end of the buildup just seems so much louder than the part with the sub. And a very simple solution to that is just going into your master channel. And let's say your buildup starts at 16 measures and your drop starts at uh, 32. You just highlight it and bring it down and create a slope so that as your buildup gets louder and louder, this master volume automation kind of compensates for it. And that way when your drop hits, it pops out in volume because it's just simply louder. And then that brings me into my last tip, which is there's a good chance your snare is too quiet. If you're making a hip hop beat or a dubstep beat or any kind of down tempo thing where the snare is the driving force behind the entire uh, beat, then that really should be pushed louder than the rest of your drums. I find people often leave it down at the same volume as all their percussions and things, but really your snare should be about as loud as your lead vocal. And if your snare is already at the top of the uh, meter, then try finding a sidechain compression solution by putting it on all the other channels that are overlapping with your snare that may be causing it to not have its own space in the mix. Your snare is such an important driving force in your beat that oftentimes I find myself going back to an old mixdown project and turning it up one or two decibels from where I had it and realizing that that was the problem all along. Uh, I think all these solutions can be that simple and there has been so many times where these have saved me a whole lot of time and effort in you know, going back and starting from scratch where you can just make these slight adjustments that may solve a huge problem. And that wraps up my six tips for louder mixdowns. If you like this video, leave a comment telling me why. If you'd like me to discuss a, another topic, leave a comment telling me why. I will see you guys next week for Tutorial Tuesday.